But first, we are looking forward to a right good cumble and crack on stage in Wickton. Now, after a near sellout, Romeo and Juliet, the ever inventive team at Wickton's John Peel Theatre, have come up with something completely different. A variety show promoting the best of Cumbrian talent, including dialect poetry, clog dancing, Wordsworth, desperately trying to be an angry young man, Deadly Deeds on Helvellyn, and local choirs. It is all in Cumberland Crack, starting this Thursday at the John Peel Theatre in Wickton. And with us this evening, this is rather marvellous. It doesn't happen as much these days, but it's rather marvellous when it does. I have a gathering in the, <laughs> in the studio um, of director and producer of Cumberland Crack, David Ross. Good evening, David. Good evening. A performer, which we'll come on to, Katie Hay. Hi. And Colin Dipple, who has an equally important role, uh, not on stage though, front of house, Colin. <laughs> Indeed, I do. Yeah, so lots of different avenues to explore, I would suggest. Um, I think maybe David ought to kick us off and tell us a little bit about the, the idea behind Cumberland Crack and, and what you're hoping to do with it. Yeah, okay. Probably last February we were planning what productions we were going to put on. Um, and we we always we do our pantomime in February half term, um, so we had a, a space end of November, and I said I'd love to put on a variety show, and people said that sounds interesting. How do you mean? <laughs> I said, well, a variety show, which highlights the successes of Cumbria, and so it'll be Cumbrian performers, but it has to be performing things that are to do with Cumbria, and. Uh, and the uh, and the committee said, great, let's do it. And then they said, could I then sort of produce it? Um, and uh, I so I'm producing it. And uh, then there's lots of lots of different acts have agreed to join in it, um, and uh, including Katie here, who's uh, acting in a couple of sketches as well. So it's uh, really exciting, and and it's great that people are coming on board with it. Um, as well it sounds if you don't mind me saying it sounds a bit of a director's nightmare because you know at that point you, you couldn't know who you might attract what kinds of acts i mean by its very nature variety <laughs> um, could encompass all sorts of different genre different types of whether from music to comedy to to tragedy even who knows you know, and, and then somehow having to pull that all together well, I wanted to have music uh, in it. I wanted to have uh, spoken word, but I also wanted to have dancing. And I happen to know Jo, who uh, I know through Keswick Theatre. Um, she's a member of uh, the uh, the Carlisle Clog and Sword team. And so they, she said, yeah, we'd love to do it and we'll, we'll do Cumberland Clog Dancing. So, so that was it. So I ticked that box. And then um, <laughs> local schools, Michelle Dodds, who is sort of our main person regards music at, 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 at the John Peel Theatre, she's very kindly got three different schools and got the, um, the community choir from Abbey Town as well. Uh, and she's doing a solo bit. So, so we've got the music. And then different uh, groups from around North Cumbria um, being involved in monologues, duologues and sketches. And it, 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 it fell into place so easily, thankfully. It sounds to me like there was a bit of Cumberland Crack going on to, to get all these people <laughs> on board. So Cumberland Crack on every level. So Katie, what, what, when this idea was broached, what, did, what was your initial reaction? Well, I was a bit shy, actually, and scared to get involved. Um, so I had some encouragement from uh, David and Connie at the theatre and came along to an audition. And I, I think I'm going to have to own up here to feeling like a bit of a fraud because I'm, I'm not Cumbrian. I'm from, well, I've lived in London for a long time, came up five years ago. So one of the best things about this whole production is that I'm trying <laughs> to, <laughs> to speak with a Cumbrian accent in one of them and a Yorkshire accent in the other. And I'm having a whale of a time learning. I've had help from local drama teachers and friends. Um, but uh, yeah, it's not something that comes easily to me. And um, it's, it's great fun doing that for my part. Who's oh. doing grand last <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, well, that Colin, that... <laughs> Why aren't you on stage? Oh, I decided I'd 
take it. I take a few months off as a sabbatical. Let someone else have a go. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, as you said earlier, I'm I'm involving myself in in the production from a front of house point of view. More importantly, behind the bar point of view, especially trying to get people as drunk as possible, <laughs> or at least selling them as much drink as they would reasonably wish to purchase. It does sound to me as if it'll be a real celebration of an evening, a celebration of... I mean, I don't think it matters that you're not Cumbria. <laughs> you, you, you live in Wickton, yeah. you, your children go to school in Wickton, yeah. you're, you're part of that community. And I think, I'm guessing that's what David was after, really. Mm-hmm. Yes, it was people with the enthusiasm who, um, not necessarily uh, Cumbrian-born, but they live in the area um, and they were willing to celebrate yeah. um, Cumbria. Um, and uh, as I say, it was so easy to get people on board. Um, I mean, the di- Cumbrian dialects, po- I've got two poets, who um, Pauline and Kath, who they write the poetry um, and they're happy to perform it as well. So that was great. Mm, it's, it's, it's a wonderful sort of mix from, from what you've told us so far you know, of the Cumbrian dialect the clog da- I mean the, the fact that the clog <laughs> dancing came first <laughs> who knew I can't wait to see that I the know. clog dancing I'm really excited our stage manager <laughs> is just hoping that our trap door is uh, strong enough uh, to cope with the, the cloggies mm-hmm. yeah. and the other thing I, as well I think it, it's that interest in sort of maybe not hidden dimensions of Cumbria slash Cumberland but bringing out the quirks, the eccentricities, the, the things that are essentially, I suppose, almost unique to this place. And there's so much like that. I, I hadn't realised five years ago when I moved here, um, just immersing myself in meeting people from Maryport and Whitehaven. And, to, and first of all, I didn't know what they were saying to me. I couldn't understand it. And, and I've just learned so much. And it's just a wonderful, vibrant place. And the theatre, I've never met such a like thriving community um when we when i went along to the pantomime in february um last year and and my son who was five then was just chortling away in the background to the the ridiculous jokes really and he and when we got involved from that because we just thought it looks like they're having a lot of fun here let's get involved and since then the whole family's been involved Um, my husband doesn't doesn't act but he's been painting the set um and the stage uh, and the children have all been involved in romeo and juliet and it's honestly it's five living here for five years i've not made such sort of good friends and felt such part of community as i have through the theater and it's giving such confidence i mean going off the subject a bit but at the open mic night uh, two weeks ago it was just amazing seeing teenagers who were obviously quite shy getting up there on stage and in a safe space and performing and getting such a good response and i think hopefully overcoming those fears and and getting the confidence to go on and do other things i think uh, one of the one of the things i really like about uh, uh, wigton is the fact that the children are totally integrated and that um, in romeo and juliet it was understood right from the start they would take a role in the play um, and it's and it's great to see their enthusiasm, mm-hmm. and uh, and they will in the pantomime, they will have an important part to play in the pantomime as well, mm-hmm. and it's it's great that and uh, to see that integration. Mm-hmm. Yeah, never mind Romeo and Juliet. It almost sounds like a love story between <laughs> <laughs> Katie and and oh. the John Peel Theatre. And I think maybe we might hear a similar love oh, story ab- from Colin. Yeah, um, I. S- I was on Facebook one day and I, I saw a, an ad for the the, the local theatre. Uh, there was stage, I think it was Midsummer Night's Dream. And I thought it was about time the wife and I got some culture <laughs> that didn't come out of a yoghurt pot. So we went along and just, just from walking through the door, it was just a beautiful space. Um, and it, there was just such a warm vibe. Uh, and so when I then saw that they were looking for members... Um, we went along and signed up, and then, as, as Kate said, we, we went along to the the open mic nights to see what was going on. And from there, I got the courage to get up on stage and perform some of some of my poetry and some of the people's poetry. Um, and then, when they were doing uh, a series of sketches which David had written, I went along for an audition, and that's how I got my first ever acting role. Um, and from that, I've been in Panto, I've been in, in other productions, 
uh, and when I'm not acting, I'll go along to rehearsals and I'll I'll do prompt. And and, and as you said, I, I do front of house stuff. I'll run the bar and I mean front of house is a vital important thing because this is another way for the for the theatre to produce funds, which mm. which we desperately need because we're paying for batteries for our solar panels so that we can not have to pay through the nose for electric yeah. like everyone else has. Mm. Um, so it, it's most important you come and buy drinks and mm -hmm. ice creams and raffle tickets <laughs> and just put some money in the donation box, please. Mm. Are you, were you a salesman in a previous life? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know how I worked that one out, yeah, it's, Colin. Uh, yeah. Just you know, but but this idea that you had had not had either the opportunity, maybe, or found the, the courage to to you know, pursue the, either performing your poetry on stage or becoming someone else on stage as as an actor, and yet there's something about the Wickton Theatre that unlock that within you it's rather wonderful yeah i mean as my colleagues have said it's it's a it's a family and it really is um last year we we suffered uh some terrible tragedies um with losing a very dear and important member of of our company to the um the dreaded nastiness that's going on uh and we also lost her mother-in-law, who was also part of the family. And we almost lost one more member. And um, we we all felt it desperately. And that's actually why we ended up having the panto in February this year, purely because we had to put it off, because none of us were in the right place mm. to be trying to be jolly and funny and everything else, when, quite frankly, all our hearts were breaking. Um, so that's why we moved the panto to February and it was an absolute sellout success and so we've decided to do that again for next year it's half term so it's it's easier for everyone to come along and everyone else doesn't have their Christmas shows on so we get more of the marketplace mm -hmm. we are ultimately very much like that mercenary <laughs> is I believe the word <laughs> or but, mar marketing savvy uh, yeah that's a is much it, nicer way I'm, well, I'm a little bit that, more diplomatic that's why you get the bigger books <laughs> oh I don't know we won't even start to go there <laughs> uh, I don't think but but it sounds to me as though the Cumberland crack show is, is I don't know it's perfect for this time of year don't you think because it's not quite time for Panto yet oh, maybe yes, well maybe it, well no it's not yeah, oh no it's not we all need something <laughs> to lift us don't we with the mm. cold weather and the mm. Dark nights. And, and I think there's something about that, that idea of a, of, of a variety show that it, 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 it does appeal. And sometimes we forget how much yeah. we enjoy that mm. type of format. And I think um, it's something that the audience has latched onto because we're we sold out for Saturday night yeah. um, on Thursday night. We've virtually sold out, but we've still got a few. And then on Friday night, we've got a few. So if people want to come along, we have still got tickets Thursday, Friday, mm. um, but they are going quickly. As I say, Saturday's sold out. Oh, my goodness. Oh, this is this. Oh, no pressure then, Katie. No, no. you you, you asked me about getting involved, and, and actually there's something I didn't say that's probably quite important, although I don't want David to get a big head, so don't listen, David. Um, I came along to this, this read-through or the audition, uh, and I hadn't seen the script before for these sketches. And they honestly, they were hysterical. And I was just chortling along as I was reading them. And um, they're just, they're, one of them's sort of set, and I'm not going to give away too many secrets, one of them set um, sort of around the time of Hadrian's Wall being built. Hadrian trying to get planning permission for that. And the other one's um, William Wordsworth being called over to Huddersfield planning office to um, try and do wonders for them to sell Huddersfield to tourists like he has. For the late, for district, the late district, yes. And, and... They were so, so funny. And I think the children who come from the primary schools will really enjoy the Hadrian's Wall one because Romans and the wall is part of their curriculum at the moment and it will help them learn in a funny way about it. Mm. Yeah, and your, the character that you play <laughs> is one that Colin knows quite yes, well. Yes. So there are all sorts of connections here, aren't <laughs> they? Yeah, I, I don't see you as a bigot somehow. <laughs> no. That's what's so fun. It's about the opposite to what I've done mm. in my jobs. I'm sort of all about the inclusion strategies for charities. And yeah, uh, so I'm having great fun 
being about as opposite to my character as I can be and, and with my accent, a very different accent as well. <laughs> and, and David, you're the man who's come up with these scenarios. Yes, I, um, I wrote to, for, for when Colin did uh, the four sketches, the planning officer and both from the clerk, the bigoted clerk that Katie's playing. Mm-hmm. There's a rich vein there. So I've been able to set them at, uh, in the Garden of Eden um, where mm-hmm. the planning office, God asked the planning officers to set up a garden and the clerk, um, Bothram, decides health and safety is essential. So you've got to make sure you do everything right and can't understand how you're allowed venomous snakes and <laughs> why you haven't got safety harnesses for climbing up to get that apple from the tree. Um, and uh, Stonehenge, what would have happened if people had come across the planning officer and bought them at Stonehenge? And then um, the, the others, and oh, the end of the world, when the end of the world didn't quite go right. Um, and so this time I've got the planning officer and the clerk um, in AD 1900, uh, <laughs> sorry, in uh, 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 1900 years ago, in AD 122, for their um, Hadrian, assuming he had to come and get planning permission mm. for the wall and what might have happened. <laughs> and then, a, f- and then uh, a couple of hundred years ago, I thought, what happens if um, William Wordsworth really wanted to be an angry young man? And then I developed the sketch. And again, the planning officer and clerk are there. Um, and they're trying to, the clerk's trying to corrupt Hay- uh, um, William. And of course, William's sister um, and the planning officer don't want that. They want beautiful rhymes about the countryside to celebrate Huddersfield. Mm-hmm. And, and you'll see who wins out. Oh, my goodness. I'm well, intrigued. One thing you can rely on with hilarious consequences. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a stroke of genius, I, w- I would suggest, to... It- so well, there's one thing having bigoted planning officers in a modern day context, but to remove it from the modern day context yeah. and put it in a historical context, one but a recognisable historical context that's local to us, mm. then I don't know something happens to the humour. Then mm. I think mm. because it, because you you don't there isn't that yes there's the satire, but it doesn't there's not going to be an edge of bitterness really, is there? No, I think. The Hadrian's no. Wall sketch to me is a mix between Baldrick in Blackadder, my character, I think, a bit, and um, the Chuckle Brothers, because there's quite a lot of interested um, to me to you humour with <laughs> physical humour with Hadrian and his, and his minion, um, so that's great fun. And for you as a writer, David, seeing seeing your sketches realised on stage, well, and indeed your acting. I don't know if you ra- are you acting in one of your own sketches. Yes, yeah, I'm William Wordsworth. <laughs> oh, pleased to meet you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just the star role. This is, this is what you get when you write yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, write yourself. The star role. Mm. Oh, oh, well, there's so many things going How are we going to juggle all these balls? Uh, teamwork. Mm. It's uh, Everybody works together. Um, I write it and then they develop it. Um, and it's great. It's uh, When I did the pantomime for last February, um, it was there, but it only came alive because the director, Connie, and the actors turned what's quite dry on paper into something quite exciting. And I'm not one of those writers who is very protective of what they've written. <laughs> because I, and I try to minimalise the directions because I like the director and the actors to develop it because they will add so much more into what I've written. Mm. There are some writers who will not allow anybody to touch a full stop <laughs> or a comma. Um, I'm not like that because I know uh, I've got people around me who's, who are going to put an th- incredible amount in to develop it. Mm. So no need to be precious, is there really, no. when you've got people like that mm. around you? What strikes me as, as well is that you, you're all from such different backgrounds and, and and all of you, I imagine the rest of the team at the theatre as well, you know, you're from different professions, you're at different stages in your lives. You're, Katie, you're still in the full throes of family life and 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 work and and david i know you've worked as a teacher and and aren't now but devoting you so much time all of you to to this i don't know pursuit of pleasure i suppose but uh but also giving pleasure to other people Oh, it's it's the adoration. We, we're in it solely for the adoration. <laughs> it's, 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 is that what it is? Oh, absolutely, yes. It, it's the, the worship. 
Yeah, the, and the, the roar of the grease paint, the smell of the crowd, that, that's what we all need. <laughs> well, it allows me to be someone I'm not, because I'm a very shy, retiring person, as you can gather. Mm -hmm. um, but on stage, you can be whoever you want, and it's great, great doing that. Mm -hmm. And Katie, you fit it, I mean, from the way you described it, your whole family... Has, has unwittingly really yes. not, not <laughs> this wasn't something you set out to do oh we must move here and we must no. we must get involved in the local theatre group that's not how it happened no no it's um uh, just been inspired really by that that panto that story you told colin about um the kind of the cast and the emotion and the fa sense of family that even though the humor came across for the pantomime at the end of it that strong feeling and sen sense of family came across too um, I think particularly for my teenage daughter at the secondary school, um, she's always been quite keen to get involved in drama, to be a director or an actor, and she's not really had much opportunity. So being able to be part of Romeo and Juliet, um, not just acting in it, but also helping out at rehearsals if, if one of the lead roles wasn't there, I think she could read in some of the lines for them sometimes, getting to see what goes on with the lighting um, and, and, and seeing even the directors, just everything that's involved with directing and producing a play like that. Um, I think it's been really good for her to see how just, it's a huge thing, isn't it, doing a production? And I think she's learned a lot from that, which she'll take on, hopefully, to inspire her with her career. Mm, how it all comes together yeah. and, and how mm. so many unsung heroes mm. as well. Yeah. That's that's yeah. the other part of it. And, and the other thing that strikes me about, you know, when I, when I look at the John Peel Theatre website mm. and I look at the types of productions that, that are put on, you know, it's really wide ranging. And, you know, from, from things like, you mentioned the open mic night, things like that, you seem to be tapping into and all all sorts of different parts of the of the local community mm. and and so broadening your appeal if you like if you want to talk i don't know we're back to the marketing speak i suppose but not really but it doesn't seem to me to be about marketing it seems to me about being inclusive mm. i think um i don't know if that's absolutely i mean we we uh, we like to be as inclusive as as we can be mm. certainly you will almost certainly find when uh, particularly for the pantomime, anyone who comes to an audition, if they want to be in it, somehow or other, a part will be found for them. Um, and Connie Jensen, our, our chair and director, um, has quite the knack of being able to find people's strengths. Um, and so we'll be able to, to make the best use of, of someone. And sometimes even talents that they didn't know they had. Um, she certainly encouraged me um, to bring out my natural comic side. Mm. Uh, and to, to refer back to the, the four sketches uh, of David's that I did, um, what was beautiful with David's scripts was they were very sparse. There was a, a lot of dialogue and barely any direction, which gave me a lot of room to roam. Uh, and so there was an opportunity to bring in um, visual humour and and things like that. And I also, unfortunately, discovered I've got quite a knack for ad lib. Um, <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> does it show? Sorry. Um, so, yeah. And also, when when we talk about the the open mic nights we had, um, when we were all locked down, we moved on to doing them virtually. We did them over Zoom. Um, and it gave people who can't come to the theatre an opportunity to be involved in what we were doing on a Friday night. And so we got a much broader spectrum of, of your, abilities. Yeah. So w w we will take anyone and we will make the best of you what we can. Mm -hmm. uh, and th there's always roles. There's, there's roles backstage. Uh, Robin, our stage manager, is an absolute Trojan. Um, he works his little socks off. Um, he refuses to act. He refuses to learn lines. Um, but as far as stage managers go, he's brilliant. And that's at least one fiver he owes me. Yeah. <laughs> and um, to, uh, also our sound and light. Uh, for Cumberland Crack, we've got Matt and Edward who are doing the sound and light. They are still at school. Um, and Edward is probably... 12. 12. Edward's 12. No. Yep. Um, he wanted to, to learn um, that side of the business. Yep. And uh, Connie said, well, go on, for it. go on, learn it. And the two of them 
they are going to be doing the sound and light um which is wonderful it's fabulous yeah, yeah. i mean it's so it, from listening to all three of you and your conversation it's 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 so vibrant you, you get the, I, i'm getting the buzz sitting here mm-hmm. and it's so lovely when, when you hear so much about you know t- town centers dying and all of this kind of yeah. stuff i know it's a slightly different thing but but to hear that that you know, the john peel theater is thriving is is attracting all manner of different people to perform and to be involved and i mean david i know that you are involved in other theater groups around the county as well and you know it, i just i just find it fabulous that that you know after all the setbacks and knockbacks that we've had all of us over the past th- three years that you, you've emerged phoenix like from the flames from the ashes and and in some ways as colin alluded to there you know things have been strengthened in the interim yeah um, sadly uh, nationwide the audiences are not back to where they were with covid and i think we we've been lucky that say for romeo and juliet's sold out each performance and i'd like to think that for cumberland crack as a saturday sold out already we've got a few tickets left so uh, hurry up and book them mm-hmm. um and uh, it's great that but all the all other theaters um it's they're struggling to get back to where they were, maybe at best 75% of where they were, which has a big strain on their finances. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, it's something that we, as I mean, Colin said about, if we hadn't have uh, been able to buy the batteries, we probably could not afford to pay the huge increase in our um, electricity bill. Mm. So we needed an alternative. We've got a team of people who look after that side. So... Um, there's one of the one of our people. Um, he's he doesn't get involved in acting at all, but by gum he's uh, important for jet for for raising uh, funds for for the theatre. Um, so everybody's important in our theatre mm. to keep it going and to keep it live. Mm. Well, it certainly sounds like you're doing that in mm. no uncertain terms. <laughs> Cumberland crack. Mm. It just like I say, it sounds the perfect show mm-hmm. for this county at this time of year and, and nothing too in a way I suppose dark nights you don't want anything too taxing <laughs> I don't think it, we just you, you want something that takes you from well one genre to another yeah. or whether it's from dance to song to music I mean it'll be just the perfect mix and pick me up for you know the dark nights yeah. and and if we'd have had a, cum- a Cumberland ventriloquist mm-hmm. act, I would have taken them on as well. <laughs> Maybe there is someone out there. Please get in touch. Is there still time? <laughs> <laughs> so, well, good luck, um, I, will, I will say as well. And I mean, I just found it wonderful that you've all taken the time to come in here this evening as well. And give us an insight, not just into Cumberland Crack, but into the wider workings and uh, the behind the scenes goings on of the John Peel Theatre. I'm sure you haven't told me the half of it. Well, thank you for having us. <laughs> yes. Before we go, obviously, uh, please find us on Facebook under Wigton's John Peel Theatre. Uh, you can get our tickets from Ticket Source. You can get them from our website. Buy tickets, come and see. There are tickets already on sale for the pantomime, which has only just been written. Mm-hmm. The ink is still drying. Is that true? It is, yes. We're doing our auditions um, uh, a week tonight and on Tuesday. So if anybody fancies auditioning, 28th and 29th uh, of November, um, auditioning for, for the pantomime. And and it, as well as calling it the pantomime, does, does it have a title, a it, working title? Yes, it is. The pantomime is Cinder's. Uh, but if anybody knows who knows me will know, it'll be Cinderella <laughs> with lovely little twists. Mm. Well, I think we ought to leave it there, really. Just just <laughs> hanging cliffhanger like in the in the ether there. Cinders with twists mm-hmm. at the John Peel Theatre in Wickton. Before that, though, of course, we've got Cumberland Crack starting this Thursday. Hurry up and find out if you can get tickets for Thursday and Friday. Don't bother for Saturday at the minute because it's it's sold out. We are reliably informed. Uh, D- David, Katie, Colin. Thank you so much for coming in this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you are 
captivated by the thought of Cumberland Crack, soon to be on stage at the John Peel Theatre in Wickton, uh, then you can find out more and obtain tickets through their website, which is www.wictontheatre.org. That's www.wictontheatre.org for more information on Cumberland Crack from clog dancing to dialect poetry to local choirs to Hadrian's Wall.